Welcome everyone to the first Kids Knowledge Seekers Workshop presented by the Keshe Foundation and the Spaceship Institute. My name is Rick Crammond and I will co-host this weekly series with Kevin Devaney. And Kevin is organizing the Kids Workshops and he will make a short introduction here. Then we will hear from Mr. Keshe who will explain the workings of the universe in a way that the child in all of us can understand. Mr. Cash will then answer questions from the kids of all ages. Kevin, can you continue? Yes, uh, thank you, Rick. Uh, again, my name is Kevin Davani. Um, uh, when I was a kid, uh, approximately six or seven years old, I remember asking many, many um, uh, let's say creative questions to my dad and at that time I could not get so I couldn't get any answers which I was searching for um, the whole um, the whole reason for this kids workshop is uh, to gain some understanding uh, start gaining understanding um, uh, for all those questions which um, many kids might have in you know, when they're young or going to school, learning physics, biology, chemistry. And um, and I guess uh, Mr. Kesh, when he was a kid, he um, most probably asked himself the same question, which I had, uh, you know, about the universe, about our galaxies, our planets, our stars, the moon. What are we made of, the, uh, you know, our planet Earth? So... Um, Maybe, uh, you know, um, all those things that we learned at school might not be uh, totally wrong, but uh, um, since I have been following Mr. Cash, reading his books for a few years, I'm, I, I started, you know, uh, understanding the connections uh, a little bit better. So, um, Mr. Cash, I want to give you here the floor and... Um, and uh, introduce yourself maybe to all those new listeners. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kevin. And uh, welcome to all our children, especially myself. Uh, I'm still very old, but very young at heart and a child. Uh, my son is sitting in front of me and he's shaking his head. I was actually about his age, about eight, when I was introduced to the X-rays and radiation, and then I watched a man at a very young age landing on the moon, and I remember that night, lying on the floor, and watching, hoping that I can see the man landing on the moon. I still clearly remember that day, it was in July, summertime. And that was the first times when, to me, was to understand more. And he had that, that understanding more about the field and the world and the galaxies has never stopped. One of the most important things I think for the young children to understand, or young listeners, is that man is here not just because of what we say. Man is here because collectively as a race, over hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years, we have gathered information and we have passed it on from father to son and to grandchildren. And now, we have the facility of the computers to be able to share this knowledge much rapidly and better. A lot of you know and have played with magnets. Magnets and the magnetic fields are the backbone of the creation. Nothing in the world is and can exist without magnetic fields. But, all the magnetic fields in the universe, don't have the shape of, very much what you get on your fridges. These are the magnets you see in your fridges. The little magnets. So, if you look, you already have, and lived, and play with magnets. These are little magnets you stick on the fridge, on your door. But, Behind these, sits the whole mystery of the creation. If you go to every single smaller piece, they are actually, are very much like this. They are little, little uh, spheres. But, in the universe, spheres don't sit on the floor. The spheres sit upright. And, 
these spheres of magnetic fields, when they sit upright, they look very funny, they look like a little ball, which they rotate. And this, in our language, in a bigger language, we call a plasma. If you see a ball, this is what we call a plasma. And the whole creation is made and is based on these little magnets, which rotate, and they rotate very fast, and from them, we see magnetic fields. This is like these wires. If you look at these wires, these are all what we call magnetic fields. This is what comes out of the fields from the top of these little balls. And then, they go and they turn, as you see, in different directions and different place, depends how these fields can spread, and where is there is a friend which is equal to them. So, if you look at these magnets you had, like the little fish, out of it is coming millions and millions of fields like this, which is looking for a mate, for a friend to play with, or to join. And where it joins, then it sticks, and then we call it a magnet. In in very easy way, what it is, we want you to understand a simple thing. In the world, magnets, in the way your body, cells of your body are made, are not flat. They're always in the shape of a ball. And this is a huge departure from what we thought and we think in the past, at least hundred years. So, what we show you is, that instead of going and showing you little magnets, magnetic fields, we start the process of teaching you, from the beginning, about the plasma. Because it's no use teaching you about the magnet, which is flat, and then saying the magnet rotates and become a ball. This is exactly the shape of a magnet, a magnetic fields, we call the plasma, and from it, one side, fields come up like this, and from the other side, the field go in like this. So, in fact, what goes in from one side, has to come out of the other side. But, in the process in the middle, inside there are some more magnetic fields, which can join the ones which are coming out. It's just like when you go in the tunnel. What goes in the tunnel, when you go, has to come out of the other end. But in this process, we call it magnetic fields. These are the fields, the little strands you see. So, these strands have to go somewhere and join something. And then, when they join something, is usually another plasma. So, what you get? You get two plasmas. And, the field from one has to go in the other one. So, when you look at the overall between the two, you see a mesh like this. So, even though you're looking at a, a sticker with a little girl on it here, with a magnet on the fridge, a little fish, or whatever, between them is loads of fields like this, traveling from one to another and back. And this is what we call magnetic fields, where the rays come out. But in fact, individually, they are little balls. But the difference is that, in a real life, a magnetic field from the ball can be seen, when it comes out, it's like an egg. But we know inside the egg, is very soft, is very gentle. And that's what's inside the magnet, inside the plasma. So, when it becomes the shell, we see the plasma. When it's not the shell, it is in the shape of a very, very soft, very, very soft matter, what we call a soft plasma. So, if I break this egg, it'll go on the floor, on the table. But, if I can gently take the shell out, which is done with this one, it's a bouncing ball. This is exactly what's inside this egg. So, this is the difference between a, what we call a matter, which we can feel, and this is the skin of the egg taken off, and that's what we call a plasma. So, this is how beautiful it is. 
you bring a lot of these bouncing balls, calling plasma, the fields join each other, and then now what do you have? A plasmas, which in small balls, all bouncing up and down, and the waves shaking like this, and now you see how beautiful plasma has become. This is millions and millions of these, make your little nails, millions and billions of these, make your little hearts. But, when they join together, so, you don't have a hard heart, like this, that you can, it's like an egg, you can hear it, it is a ball, a bouncing ball, and this ball balls everywhere, it jumps everywhere. And, this is, if I break this side, this, you see the white and the yolk. You can do this at home yourself. You can see the difference between a plasma and a matter. Matter is when it's hard. Plasma is when it's bouncy. What you can do at home yourself, to see the difference between the matter and the plasma, is get an egg, put it in a vinegar, for three days. And you come and you see the magic. There is no shell. It's only a plasma left. And then, if you break the egg, you see the inside of the two is exactly the same. The first day when you break the shell, when you get the shell moved with the vinegar, you will see the yolk. You will see everything inside. If you have, for example, a chick sitting on the egg for a few days, and you can take the shell away, you will see the little chick inside. So, in fact, if you can see through this, for example, through this ball, you can see a little dog. The little dog is in the plasma. I tried to show it to you, if you can see it. So, this is a plasma, you see, it's a ball, it's bouncing. So, this is what the plasma is. The plasma is loads of magnetic fields, which go round and round, make what we call a plasma, and then, plasma has to come out, they cannot stay. So when they come out, they have to join the others. It's just like when you go out of the house, you go and play with your friends, then it's two friends and more. But, to make a little nail, or a little toy, even to make this little magnet, needs millions and millions of these little balls joining together. So, now, in one step, you have seen how the whole universe works. If it's a small plasma, we call it one atom, or one proton. But, when it becomes a bigger plasma, we call it like Earth. And if it becomes a bigger plasma, it becomes a solar system. And if it becomes a bigger, bigger plasma, we call it the universe. So, in a very simple way, if we can use this plasma, understand how it goes through these lines from one to another, and we can collect the motion of these, it's just like hundreds of you running down the road, then you can produce what is your dream, or whatever you like to be. Here, we start showing the movement of the plasma. When we collect its energy, because it's running, it gets tired, we call it a light. You produce a torch. This torch, if you can see its light, is literally collection of hundreds and hundreds of these plasmas collected, and then it's charging the battery. This is how we make physics fun. Physics is very simple. If you can understand it, the reality of it, I'm sure you'll find out that your teachers will learn from you. And then, the simpler ways, the plasmas have to and they always join each other. As I said, if you find a friend, you can join and play. If I show you these magnets, these are like the sphere, is, you will see the magnets chase each other. The, the I'm trying to find a camera that you can see, I can move, and that one moves, if you can see it. It moves, and it moves, and it moves. Because, whatever comes from one magnet, it has to go in the other one. 
So, what comes out this magnet here, it has to go back on the other side. You cannot put all the magnetic who's coming out back into itself. So, it goes into another magnet, and that's what happens. That keeps the distance. If you see, they never come close to each other. They have to keep their distance. And this is the principle of creation. When plasmas in the universe cannot come and become sitting next to each other. So, they have a gap. And that gap allows them to move freely. And it's like you and your friends sit on the same desk in the school, in the classroom. But there is a little gap between you, that both we can wiggle and move out and move in. And that's how exactly the plasma is. So, you can start playing with games. You can join them, you can join a few, or you can join a number of them. And, at the same time, you can make them to do different things. If you bring more magnets and more magnets together, you can play different games. This is the magnets, in different shape and form. If you look at it, you can understand very easy that how magnets work. They don't need to be in touch with each other. Their fields reach each other. And this is what we call a plasma. You turn, the two of the same magnets, if you see, I put on the table. If you can see the other one. They rattle, because they can join, the fields join each other. But, magnets do not need, or plasmas do not need to be next to each other, to contact each other. So, if I turn this, that one turns. If I turn the other one, the other one turns. What happens? The field in this one, has to go around to this plasma from here in. And the field from this, now if this one, has to come and join this one. But, that's what exactly happens. You don't need connection. You see, from a distance, you play with the magnets. And this is very much what we call a plasma. It's not flat, it's a ball. And if you stretch this ball very much long, like this, this is what you call the light. The light you saw in the torch, the light which gives you a chance to see this magnet, is the same ball, when it gets stretched. If you get a chewing gum in your mouth, and chew it, and make a ball out of it, and then take it out, and stretch it as much as you can, when it's around in your mouth, is a ball, is a plasma. And when you stretch it, it's still the same thing, but very long, and that's what we call the light. And this is how everything in the universe is. You become a stretch, you become a light, you stay a spherical, you become a ball, a plasma. So, in a very simple way, to make a plasma, you need loads and loads of the fields to come together, and they spin and they spin and they spin, and they become a plasma. So, if you had a thought, I'm sure you have seen it in, the, in your time, in your classroom, or in your house, you usually play with the magnets like this. Very flat. Very, very, very flat. So, you see them, this is what magnet. But in the universe, we never see anything like this. And that's why we see everything in the universe like this. And we call it a plasma, because fields rotate, they chase each other. So, from now on, you'll understand, that, if you've seen a rectangular star in your life, when you look into the sky, no. But you see all the stars are round, the shape of a plasma. Because even the Sun is a very, very big plasma. The reason we start these teachings, is to teach you from the beginning, about the reality of how life is in the universe. It's not flat. Everything in the universe, even, uh, the smallest atom in your nail, is a spherical shape. The blood you carry in your body, is made of millions and billions of spherical shapes, and how they interact with each other, give you the color which you have. 
if you have a white shirt, the plasma in that shirt is what the other lights cannot be absorbed. If it's green, is some lights which cannot be absorbed, which the balance becomes green. But the light is very simple. The light is made in a very, very simple way. If you rub the two balls, the plasmas together, the plasmas have the fields which are going out, and they have the fields which are going in. When you rub them together, when you touch them next to each other, the ones which are going in, crash with the ones which are coming out, the ones which are coming out, crash with the other one which is going in from the other one, and it's exactly as you do with your hand. If you rub your hand, you see heat, and it gets warm. But, you don't see, if you can make it very, very dark, you will see your hand will create light too. So, that's what happens in the universe. When the magnetic fields rub against each other, the ones which are going out of the plasma, and the ones which are going in the plasma from one and the other one, you get little, little plasmas coming out. It's like, bits of skin falls when you, you, you rub your skin, you scratch your skin. And those little lights become elongated, and then become what we saw as the light. So, we bring this part to an end, and then next time we talk about more beautiful things you can learn with the plasma. How you can use plasma to light things up, and you tell us how you want us to go. Thank you very much. Is there any questions from the children? My son is shaking his head, he says, no, no, not from me. Um, not now, thank you. We are rubbing oh. our hands right now, just to... Was it a good explanation? Ask him. He says, yes, yeah, mine. Uh, what about yours? Uh, about the I, plasma. We didn't understand yeah. very well, uh, really, the definition of the plasma. How can we the explain the children yes. what exactly is plasma? Plasma is a ball of magnetic fields, which, in the center, do you, okay, I tell you something, because my son knows, maybe children can explain. Come on, you have to. I don't actually know. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, this is your children and your son. Yeah. You're explaining your... You're explaining your life. Good evening. My name is Robin. I know that a plasma is made by an energy field and little magnetic things inside it. Can we understand from your child what it means to have a plasma? What does uh, yes. he know that we add to it? Yes. Yes. These are the children of the world. No barriers, no borders, no color, no race. They can teach right. each other much simpler than we can. Let us see what he understands. He's going to explain what he understands from plasma now. We are waiting. Oh, for my child? Yes. Okay, I have Let to... Let it their program, is not ours, huh? <laughs> yes, so he said, it, it is... Um, Give him the headphone, let him speak. Yes, but he, he doesn't speak English very well, so I have to translate everything. That's good. Let you do. Let him. Let it. Let him be heard. What language does he speak? 
Uh, he speaks uh, just German, and uh, he was no uh, he was the, at the moment very fascinated about uh, about the magnets. So he's playing now around with the magnets on our fridge, and uh, <laughs> yeah, that's why I think he skipped the part with uh, <laughs> with the plasma. So he's just uh, trying uh, to to discover the magnetic fields. And trying to see how they they react to each other. So um, yes, he's just playing around and um, trying to find out how this magnetic field uh, work out. Uh huh. I think uh, for purpose of our teaching children, we yeah. deliberately kept away from magnets and magnetic flat magnets, like this one. Because yeah. we have come to understand, then you have to re-educate them to understand the magnets, uh, the order of life, the structure in the universe is a ball of fields which they run after each other, what we call a plasma. It starts from the center, the center, the yolk, is exactly a copy of an egg, the center, the yolk, is where all the field radiates out. And then, whatever radiates out, we call from the time, from place, the yolk, till come to the white or to the skin of the egg. We call it the transition point, and what we call it transmission, uh, transition field. And then, on the top, when it comes to us, we see it, we call it the matter, or things, we call it what it is. Like, here is the egg of, uh, the shell of an egg. So, a plasma is a copy, no different than an egg. But, has to have a source. You can't have things free. So, that source, if you look at the egg, is the yolk. And it radiates all its fields outwards. And, from the time and the place, on the top of the yolk, where the white starts, to where we see it as a, a skin and a shell of the egg, we call it the transition. So we call the white of the egg, the transition. It takes time to transit, to travel from the yolk to become to the skin. So, this is how we understand plasma. The source, the white, which is the transition time from the very, where it leaves the source, to the point when we see it detectable to us like an egg. Another easy example of a plasma, which is a true plasma, in true sense of plasma, is our solar system. The sun is the source, where all the fields come out. And then, for example, in our case, it takes over eight minutes, from the surface of the sun, to the surface, to the top of the top layer of the earth, for this field to travel. So, we call the transfer of the field from the surface of the sun to the upper layer of the atmosphere, the transition, which is in transit. And then, at the point when it rubs against this magnetic field and gravitational field of the Earth, manifests itself as the light, or changes and becomes matter, we call it the matter state, because now it to us detectable. And this is the easiest way to explain to children about plasma. Because nowhere in the universe, and one of the biggest problems in teaching regarding the plasma technology and the existence of life in the universe, is we try to teach children magnet in the flat form. Like this. Or magnets like this. Yes, they are like this because we push these balls together, like this, uh, what do you call it, X, or what call plasmas, and then, it's very hard to teach children, no, what you see is collection of these we squish together. But if you teach children the plasma from the beginning, it's like a ball, and all the fields in the universe come out of a big ball, from the center of the universe, and then they divide to smaller ones, and then they make the galaxies, and then the smaller one makes the solar system, and the smaller one makes the sun, and the smaller one makes the earth, and then it, when these fields become smaller and smaller, these little balls of magnetic fields, it become the parts of our body. And to teach children about flat magnets, and then trying to change, is the biggest problem which we have with the world of science today. 
That's why we tried to explain from the first session about a plasma. A plasma is a huge ball of magnetic field. With a source, the time which takes it from the source to come to be manifest to us as a matter, and when it's on its shell, totality with all the fields on the center, we call a plasma. And you can change it, you can play with it, you can understand it, in a very simple way. Because, even when it's plasma, it's soft, it's not hard. The hardness of the plasma, as we see like in this one, this to be the egg, without the shell, which is bouncy, and to be hard, this is the same egg, another one from the same chicken, because we have to keep our own chickens in the house, we know all our eggs where they come from. So, if it becomes hard, when it's in, in a soft position, in respect to the others, becomes bouncy and soft. But, when it becomes to us detectable, that we can hold it, then becomes the egg with the shell. But inside, it's still the same. So, a source, time of travel, till when we can detect it. Is in the other hand, for the children, the easiest way is, very simple, there is a school. The source, the place, is home, that's the center. And then it takes you, you get in the car, and you travel for five minutes, ten minutes, to get to the school. That's the transition time, when you're in transit. And then, when you get to school, that's the school. That's where you appear, that's where everybody's friends are. And this is the same principle. So, the cornerstone of creation is a plasma, and not magnetic fields. Magnetic fields come out of plasmas, and join other plasmas. So, this should clear, make it very easy for children to understand. As I said, plasma is a twisted, very much like this. You have waves, magnetic fields, and then this is the center of the field, if I can show it in the background of white. This is the center of the field, you can see it, and then, as the field opens up, then it manifests somewhere, it ends. That end is when the matter becomes appear. So, that's how actually it looks inside the plasma. Millions and millions of fields, that start from the center. The center is very much like this, as you see it. And these fields, as they open up, at one point, they become the point of, where we can detect them. The center is home, going around, traveling, is the time you are in the car to get to school, and at the point, the ends, is the point where we become matter, that's, that's the school. So, but in this case, the fields travel in all sorts of directions, and they are not glued together, they are free, and they move, and, if they attract each other, in the next program we'll talk, become gravity, and they repel each other, we call magnetical field or the atmosphere, which is for the next session. Is that much more clearer, or shall we try to find another way? Yes, it was clearer. It's clearer. Thank yes, you very okay. much. Is the so my son now said, uh, yes? he understood a little bit, what exactly is plasma? Mm-hmm. Idea what it is? Mm-hmm. And? Uh, it is, of course, something that you, the children cannot really touch it, get in touch with it, so, um, yeah. It is something... Because Play with, yes. still. If you can find them, ring magnets. Don't find them flat magnets. This is what we call ring magnets. Yeah? Where, in the center is again, where the fields are. Uh, mm -hmm. And I put it down. And then, stand it upright on its sides. Then, 
this is more or less the same shape of a plasma. Then, then they understand, the magnets is, you can switch it, it turns very much like this. So, um, you very easily get him to understand what the plasma is. The problem, that's why I said we started the whole process, was not to show the field, the magnets are like this. These are magnets, you can see it, you can play with it, and it moves or jumps and it catches up. But, in the universe, we don't see flat magnets. Everything is a plasma, and I think for the parents who try to teach children from the beginning, the, 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 the new understanding in, uh, in, uh, in the creation, but is to get them the real, from the beginning, introduce them to reality, not something that then they have to add up. It's a, it's a ring magnet. If you need them, if you can't get them, we can always send the link to us, and we tell you where you can get it. Because, when you're in that shape, you can see it. The magnet, so in my hand, is about 20 centimeter away, you can see it. I move it, and it moves. So, it's, in this shape, it doesn't move, when it's flat, it just jumps. But, when it's loose, when it's in a spherical shape, it turns. You see, I just move a little bit. Then, you can see, this is nearly 10 centimeter, 7 centimeter, maybe. So, it's good to teach children, the fact and the reality about, um, spherical shapes, which is the plasma. And, it cannot be done with flat magnets, it cannot be done, with the, uh, with what I call very much, circular magnets like this. Because then they don't understand it. If you can find ring magnets, and give them slight ring magnets, and let them play. And then, as long as they understand, it is very much, this is exactly the same as this. The egg and the magnet next to each other are exactly the same. In the center of the egg is the yolk, the source, in the center of this ring, is the center of the magnetic field. And when it travels from this center to here, is the time which the field transfers and transits. And when it is in the matter state, it appears as the ring. So, it's the same process as the egg. In the center you have the yolk, there is a gap between the yolk and where it comes to you as an egg. This is a transition, and when it's a solid, is the matter state. Because, in the ring you cannot explain, in a flat magnet like this, you cannot explain it. And if the children understand this from the beginning, that inside what it is, then you find out the teaching and understanding for the generation, which is going to be what I call the space generation. Then they think, they live the way the universe works. And, as we see with the adults who've been brought up with the ethos of a magnet to be flat, as most of our professors and the doctors and the university graduates, now we have a problem to teach them actually, the plasma is this shape, it behaves this way, and we see a lot of resistance from the educated people, because now they have believed and they have lived with a false information, which they have to defend, otherwise they question their own integrity of their own knowledge. And this is one of the problems we see with a lot of, a lot of plasma physicists, the top physicists at the moment, and in the magnetic field, have a problem to accept the reality that the uh, whole thing as a ball, a sphere, this is how it exists. And the ones who grasp it, especially at a young age, then you find out teaching becomes very easy. And then, it's so logical, that they can teach their own teachers, in a simple way. As uh, a professor said in the lecture I gave in the university, when the students were present, he said, I cannot tell you a lie, you heard the whole thing, like me, I just learned from the beginning myself. And he's a professor in physics. So, uh, this is the reason I didn't introduce any flat magnets, or to show magnetic fields. And we start from the beginning with plasma, which is the origin of the essence of the creation. Then, the first few minutes is very hard, because they are used to the magnets in this shape. And then they understand, all they need to know is to stand it up, and then rotate it. Then, you see the real plasma, because 
for a magnet to stick to the fridge, the fields have to come out, and some fields have to go in. And then, but it's dynamic, so, in fact, the field of this matter is about this shape. And if, in, in, in so many ways, if I take the center out, this is like a love sign, it's a heart, but the center sits in the middle. And then it radiates, and it comes to the end, and you can see it. So, um, the whole purpose of the teachings with the Keshe Foundation, starting from last week, has been for seven months, we've been talking and trying to teach uh, people around the world about the plasma. And they cannot understand it, because the teaching has been on the basis of a flat magnet. Now, trying to get them to think a magnet to be spherical in shape, it's been a battle for us for seven months. So we decided we teach the children from the beginning. In the future, when they want to play with a flat magnet, there is no problem. Because we, as I said, we never seen a, what do you call it, a flat star. We never see a flat planet. So, this, because man had to use matter to make it the shape they need, and it's always been rectangular, or it's been a horseshoe, this has been half of the problem, in trying to transfer man from the space technology into a spaceship technology. So, the, the good thing is that now we can show them, maybe next time we bring the reactors, which make a spherical magnetic field, and children will fly with this than most of the parents, because to them, it's a new, straightforward, understandable knowledge. But, keep him away from magnets on the wall, and buy him a spherical magnet, a ring magnet. And then you'll understand, they fly, because, you see, the body cannot do with a flat magnet, that way, is, if you look, as I made the rings, you can play different games with the reality than imagination. Because, if I put this here, you see it, this is a magnet, spherical, which has been made to rotate. If I put this here, which is exact behavior of a flat magnet, here, you won't see any difference. So, it's not reality. It's the same magnet, it's the same distance. Because then, the child gets confused. But, I just put this away, and put a real term magnet, which is near to this, you see what happens. You see, the change. So, they feel the affect each other. Rotation, motion, the speed of rotation. So, instead of starting in the wrong foot with the children with magnets, we talk about the plasma. Because a child is very hard to understand, how come it moves this way, and it doesn't move that way. You look, it doesn't happen. So, this is a false physic. Now, you change again. You put a magnet, which is like a light. Look. It moves, it behaves, it responds. That's why how the stars and planet respond. And this is why we started the teaching from the plasma point of view. Not from how man has been. I always say, flat magnets are matter state and that's the state of man. In the universe, everything is dynamic. And to be dynamic, you see the behavior. Very simple. These are called rattle magnets. You can buy them as a pair, because you find out, like everything else, they move. You can see the interaction. You cannot do this with other magnets. A plasma moves. If you can make more and more of them, and then, the beauty of it is, why I call the rattle magnets, magnetic fields don't make sound, but when they interact, they make no, they make a magnetic noise, or plasmatic magnetic noise, but they create light. So, you can show that light in the, in the noise of the rattle. They, they rattle. So, this is the behavior of a plasma. And, this is a false physics, which we have accepted, and this is how 
the reality in physics exists. So, you can always play with the magnets. But, if you want to understand how the universe works, and the, our generation from what we do, and we see the next generation, which are the teenagers, and the, the youngsters, have to learn from the beginning the correct way, and then so, we don't have to teach them twice. The false way, and then when they learned it, it's very hard for them. So, it's easier to make plasma physicists at the age of eight, than eighty. Or eighteen. And this is what we try to do. Try to introduce children to reality. Not just the shortcut out. And that's where it comes. In the universe, a plasma is a source, which comes out. If you look at it, this way, from the top, is flat. But, if you look at the totality of it, it's a spherical shape, which is elongated and become what we call a plasma. So, please, if you are parents, and you try to bring your children up into the spaceship program, and trying to teach them the reality, a fact about how life is created, to me, as a scientist who works at this level, when you teach your children this magnet, is not very far from the time when the man said the Earth was flat, and the center of the universe. The magnet, this is what we have to walk away from. Now that we see, we understand plasma, is to show the children the reality of what it is. You see, the two magnets are next to each other. From the flat one, you get no reaction, by moving the other one. Unless it gets attracted and it gets stuck, it doesn't rotate, just because you move another magnet. So, this is what happens. A plasma reacts to another plasma, because it's dynamic. Here, it's flat. This is exactly what we said. These kind of magnets, when you start teaching physics, about the creation, about the space technology, create a lot of dilemmas for the children in the future. So, it's better to start from the beginning, with the near enough reality they can see, and then you'll find out, they become geniuses in the space, without us doing much work. Any questions? These are called rattle, rattle uh, magnets, you can buy them. These are called ring magnets. And, these are called flat magnets. And, they all behave totally different. Any questions? To the time. Yeah. That's, we are about there. Yeah, I think yeah. we can... Sorry about that. We will carry on with this kind of teaching from now even in the adult section, or the Thursday times. Because yeah. this, uh, this is what we realized, a lot of parents don't understand. We have started this teaching this week in the lab here, and then we carry on now to our teaching uh, with the children. Uh, no, actually, it clarifies uh, for the beginning, uh, as if I were a kid, <laughs> A lot of things to me. Um, maybe uh, there's some time for uh, next time. For uh, I have a couple of questions, which it's uh, you know at that time when I was a kid, uh, because I learned from you, Mr. Cash, you know from your books that there there is no or was no such thing as a big bang. <laughs> so maybe we could go into you know into detail next time. What because you always talk about the source and about this universe. And now I've learned that there's not only one universe, but more than one universe. So, um, yeah. that would be a great yeah. thing if we could go, go into detail, because this is a question that always has been fascinating me as a kid. 
what's the real source? If everything is plasma, what is the real source of all universes then? We'll talk about it next time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Is there any questions from the bigger children or the smaller children? Um, no, no for our part. Thank you. Thank you for, for the speech. It was really very interesting for all of us, I think. Thank you very much. I hope we get more children, adult children to listen to and maybe this even makes it easier for us for adult sessions. Right. Uh, thank you very thank much you. indeed. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kesh, and to all the other participants. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. Laura, Thanks. thank you. Thank you very much thank indeed. Goodbye thank now. You. All the best with the new life. Bye bye. Bye, bye.